Hi guys, in this video I will tell you about the wetland ecosystem and I will briefly describe what are wetlands, what are their importance, what are their uses, when is the wetlands day celebrated, everything in detail. So please watch this video till the end as you will get a lot of information and it will be very helpful for you during UPSC preparation. So first we should know what are wetlands. Wetlands are areas intermediate in character between deep water and terrestrial habitats, also transitional in nature and often located between them. So we know that uh, wetlands are located between the deep water and terrestrial habitats and they have the character between deep water and terrestrial habitats. That is, they, they have an intermediate character between deep water and terrestrial habitats. Okay, these habitats experience periodic flooding from adjacent deep water habitats and therefore support plant and animal specifically adop adopted to such shallow flooding or water logging of the substrate so these experience these wetlands experience periodic flooding and uh, shallow flooding or water logging also from the neighboring areas or from any other water body and uh, these support by a lot of biodiversity like plants and flora and fauna fauna they include lake littorals marginal areas between highest and lowest water levels of the lakes that is you can see here the, these are the lake littorals guys that is the highest level of the lake highest level water body where the highest water rises till the lake and the lowest water level so these areas are the littorals that is the marginal areas between highest and lowest water levels of the lakes and floodplain areas are also there floodplain areas as you can say this is a river and uh, the floodplains are there so floodplain areas are also there in uh, wetlands and these are periodically flooded areas lying adjacent to the river channels and are periodically flooded during high discharge in the river and lake littorals are also included here lake littorals are included here you can see the uh, adjacent to the river channels that are that are flood plains and other marshy or swampy areas where water gets stagnated due to poor drainage areas are also there like this one here the water water gets stagnated and you can see the plant growth here water is stagnant this is kind of lake or whatever pond here the water is stagnant and due to poor drainage there is a wetland ecosystem has develop, developed so now we will see the definition so definition already we know that areas of marsh peatland water whether natural artificial or permanent it can be natural also artificial also permanent also temporary also because may not be flooded throughout the year and brackish or salt water including areas of marine water the depth of which at low tide does not exceed six meter it can be brackish water also in case of seas and it can be so it can be fresh water also in case of rivers so the depth of which at low tide does not exceed 6 meters so depth should not exceed 6 meter that is it it is the depth of the wetland is not should, should not exceed 6 meter that is uh, the water level should be low that is these are wetlands and the characteristics of, of wetlands are that they are always covered by water has waterlogged soil as you can see in all the, these three pictures waterlogged soil for at least seven days during the growing season and adopted plant life that is hydrophytes grow here plant which are specifically adopted in aquatic environment and hydrox hydric soils are there not enough oxygen available for some plants so wetlands can be inland wetland and coastal wetland inland wetland are of two types natural and man-made Natural means lakes, ponds, uh, waterlogged, so waterlogged, swamp, marshes. Man-made means reservoirs, tanks, etc. And coastal wetlands are estuaries, lagoons, creek, backwater, etc. These are coastal wetlands. As you can see here, this is a coastal wetland. And these are estuary, lagoon, creek, backwater, bay, etc. These are coastal wetlands. And man-made can be salt pans or aquaculture. So... Uh, World's, World Wetlands Day is always always celebrated on February 2nd every year to come to so that uh, the people know about the importance of wetlands and the, the to protect the wetlands uh, from the uh, from degradation and destruction 
and uh, ramsar ramsar convention which was a con convention uh, adopted in iran uh, iran it is a cities city in iran and it the ramsar convention was adopted there so uh, it is the convention protects the bio, uh, convention protects the wetlands and its significance and uh, and creates awareness and education among people about the significance of wetlands and also recognizes uh, wetland sites of ecological and biological importance across the world so ramsar convention does this and now we will look, look at some of the function of wetlands so first functions of wetlands are that you can see here in this slide habitat it provides habitat to aquatic flora and fauna as well as numerous species of birds including migratory species and uh, filtration of sediments and nutrients from surface water so if there is some uh, surface water is flowing then it will filter it that is the sediments will settle inside the uh, wetland ecosystem and then uh, it will and nutrients also then it it provides water purification flood mitigation because if there is flood then the wetland will first be flooded and then the surrounding areas it acts like a sponge maintenance of stream flow because it is a source of water groundwater recharge is a very important significance of the wetlands because it stores water and recharges the groundwater due to which the moisture level of the area always remains constant it also provides drinking water fish fodder fuel etc and control rate of runoff in urban areas and buffer shorelines against erosion it also control, controls erosion in shorelines so these are some of the very important uh, significance of wetlands one of the most important significance is that it stabilizes the local climate also during summer seasons or when there is hot climate and source of livelihood to local local people maybe they can grow crops from these waters or cultivate crops or uh, fish do fishing in these waters shellfish also uh, grow in wetlands are also found in wetlands and also many types of uh, fauna which can be used in medicines to uh, to uh, make medicines and uh, in uh, sanitary purposes also so now uh, uh, it can also be used for tourism and recreation and cultural heritage sites as cultural heritage sites but the reasons for depletion of these wetlands as you can see is overgrazing remo removal of sand from beds conversion of lands for agriculture first and main reason is conversion of land for agriculture because we know we need to grow crops to sustain our lives so conversion of land of agriculture is happening very fast and it is one of the very um, uh, important uh, reason for depletion of wetlands and aquaculture is also very important reason for depletion of wetlands because fishing and fishing on a very large scale will destroy the ecosystem habitat destruction and deforestation because if they, there is there are no trees then uh, groundwater recharge is not being done and soil erosion is also being done so the wetlands will uh, will get more runoff from the soil that is more nutrients and um, more nutrients and uh, pollutants will get into the wetlands or the ponds and lakes and it will it will it will lead to eutrophication and also overgrazing of animals these are some or pollution pollution is one of the main causes as you can see here pollution and uh, drainage also that, that is drainage of domestic waste and industrial effluents into the um, wetland ecosystem and uh, climate change also so the mitigation strategies are that uh, with mitigations as you can we will i can again show you some images of wetlands this is a wetland this is a wetland this is a wetland these all are wetlands these are can be salty water or fresh water also and the depth of the wetlands is not more than six meter and it can be man-made or man-made and natural also in the case of both inland wetland as well as coastal wetlands so i am not able to display uh, the image of salt pan here but it is found in the uh, run of kutch in gujarat where a lot of salt is produced so now we can again go back to the mitigation strategies so mitigation strategies are first to create awareness which the ramsar convention does and environmental awareness about uh, 
uh, wetlands and then eutrophication abatement removal of encroachment soil conservation and afforestation afforestation artificial protective measures and protection of natural regeneration and survey and demarcation first survey and demarcation should be done very important very strictly so that we know what are the areas of the wetlands and then uh, afforestation should be done soil converts it will lead to soil conservation conservation and groundwater recharge and it will lead to eutrophication abatement then removal of encroachment should be done and environmental awareness should also be done wildlife conservation will automatically be done if we conserve our wetlands okay guys hope you like the video see you in the next video